as early as 1927, Alfred Adler, an Austrian psychologist, said in his book Understanding Human Nature that anger is a direct expression of emotions that are the epitome of the desire for power and domination. Religious philosophy spoke earlier about controlling anger. Welcome to another video. In your daily life, you encounter people who get angry as a rare reaction. We meet people every day who get angry out of habit. There are people for whom anger is a way of life. So let's first understand why we get angry. Thinking, analyzing and understanding things is a necessary condition for our survival. This is called our reason. In this process, we begin to evaluate things, trying to decide what is useful and what is harmful, what we should stay away from and what we should see, and how things and other beings, including people, relate to us. We are supposed to make value judgments and do what is best for us. But we are not biologically programmed to automatically make the right choices here. We are free in this even if our families and mentors try to put us on the right path. So we may choose values that are not compatible with our well-being. These values are our motivators. They are the regulators of our emotions. Anger is one of these emotions. Anger plays two roles here. First, we feel anger when what we value is attacked, whether verbally through insults or physically through bullying or emotionally through neglect. The resulting anger drives us to act to reduce or remove the cause of our anger in the hope that it will make us feel better. The other role is that anger can be a part of our value system as I described above even though we may not like it. If you are watching this, you are probably one of those who, like me, try not to place a value on their anger. When anger becomes a habit or way of life, it leads such people to seek superiority by exercising power whenever possible. They try to get their own way and remove obstacles by using anger. Such people are also sensitive and do not trust others. They resort to aggression even at minor provocations. The whole thing is underlined by their feelings of inferiority. This is not different from the temper tantrums of children, even if the results are different. Understanding it, if you have this problem, would help you heal and improve your sensitivity and passion for your creative powers and make them work for you. There are other ways people express anger. Giving silent treatment to the one against whom the anger is directed or directing criticism, or being sarcastic, blaming, pouting, or procrastinating can all be expressions of anger and an attempt to gain control or the upper hand in the situation. Sometimes anger is masked by another emotion such as sadness or loss, disappointment, worry, or fear. Developing insight would help to understand that this is part of a normal process. That would help to cope better with these circumstances and keep away from guilt and depression. And then there are people who choose to express their anger in a controlled way. They try to talk about the cause of their anger, understand it and solve the problem in a productive way. This approach is not always possible because it depends on the cause. It also depends on the other party if that is relevant. So why do we sometimes say that anger is a negative emotion? Anger is part of our fight or flight response, which is a part of the human survival mechanism. Our sympathetic nervous system is activated to prepare us for a challenge, which helps us. At the same time, our stress hormones, especially cortisol, are activated. If you put your body in a state of chronic stress response by getting angry frequently, your immunity and mental and physical health will suffer. In one of my previous videos, I talked in detail about the chronic stress response. I will leave the link in the description below. I talked about how value judgments control our emotions. 
when you react in anger some kind of disadvantages value system comes into play as a result your uncontrolled response and reaction may not be rational and may cause you problems this may cause you to struggle with negative consequences later this has led philosophers and psychologists to discuss aggression in depth and religious leaders to talk about controlling anger and spreading love and compassion we need to understand that anger has helped humans in evolution as an adaptive response when it comes to fighting for opportunities resources and existence anger and the fight or flight response that comes with it play an important role if you are able to recognize anger and the associated emotions of anger like resentment jealousy and contempt in others you can accept the threat and meet it effectively please like share and comment on this video please subscribe to our channel it will help us to make more videos anger helps us work towards a goal it is up to us to make that goal work for us sometimes it is necessary to take on the challenge of facing a situation that has made us angry and understand the situation for what it is this will help us to make our decisions and act with a clear mind this is an important requirement in today's world where social hierarchy material possessions and career success play a big role if you are able to understand your anger you will always have insight when you are angry this insight will help you focus on an approach that will benefit you if you make this approach a habit you can use it to your advantage thank you so much for watching